two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two. All right, <clears throat> that's enough messing. Listen, this is um, not the Morning Espresso show. This is the guitar lessons. All right, here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. All right, all we're doing today is counting, which I know seems like a load of shite, but uh, it's a bit of crack. <laughs> uh, just keep on it. two and three, click something. Uh, this seems very, you know, mundane and easy, but it's really not. One and two. Um, so you don't need a guitar for this lesson. You don't really need a guitar for any of my lessons. This is the fifth lesson, I believe. Lesson four is on guitar tuning. Let's keep tapping, people. Three and four and one and two and three and four and one. It's good to do this even while you listen to music. In case your body being like a pendulum swinging. And um, don't worry if you're a slow learner or whatever. I wasn't able to click my fingers till I was like 16. And I was trying since I thought it was so cool. I was trying it since I was a kid. Uh, we all learn different speeds. And three and four. Okay, so we're going to be learning primarily about strumming patterns today. And we're just going to do the uh, the down strum. Okay, if you're looking on the screen, I don't know if you're listening to this or you're. Uh... Oh God, excuse me. Keep and four and one and two and three. One. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and boy oh boy it's a bit hard to concentrate on that going on. All right, listen, um, we're going to go over quickly how to do the chords and then we're going to practice staying in time. All right. Now you'll notice. Oh my word, it must be popular. You'll notice that uh, we're just counting to four. The diagram is there on the screen at the top there. It just says on the diagram, it, the diagram is purely black and red. You can get this anywhere on the internet if you don't have the video stream for this. It just says one and two and three and four and. Now all the ands are up strums, so that's towards the sky, and all the uh, the numbers are down towards the ground, and they're often the down ones are a little bit louder than the up ones. All right, so don't worry so much about the chords in this lesson. We just want to start uh, in the last lesson. We're talking about how important it is just to have that chord ready for the first beat okay for the first beat so one and two and getting ready from four next chord one and two and getting ready to the next chord four and one and two and three get ready to the next chord one okay so it's all about that first beat um, and your guitar might be sounding like this at the moment it might not ring be ringing out all the Persistence is the way through, okay, ladies and gentlemen. We're gonna tune up just before we begin. And the piano will stop working, here we go. Can you guys hear that? So that's D. But we're doing a lesson on how to tune, so don't worry if this doesn't make sense, it'll just all sink in. Like learning a new language, all right? Then we're on to G. Bit of the cheeky bit of D and E. Alright, here we go. All right, let's go over these chords just to refresh. You gotta keep going over these chords, we're gonna be going over the parts of the body and everything, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen! <laughs> this is private one on one lessons. Comment below. Alright, so here's the A chord. 
remember I used to call it the staircase. Okay, we've got a diagram there on the screen. All right, so big E string is the, the string close to the ceiling. Next we have the A string, which sounds like this. Uh, then we have the D string. You can play it along with me, okay? And next we have the G string. Next we have the B string. And next we have the E string. All right, I'm just gonna keep jumping around. Um, various topics to do with guitar. I just try to keep you guys interested, all right? So let's go over these parts of the body. You try and say it before I say it, okay? This big circular thing in the center of the body, what's that called? That's right, it's the sound hole. What's this thing here at the end that you walk over? Oh, I'm going on holidays, going for a walk. It's called the bridge. What are these little things right here that hold the strings in at the end of the acoustic guitar? There's six of them. They're often black and white. What are they called though? They're like little nails to hold strings in place. They're called the pegs. All right, what are these metal lines on the fretboard? There's about 20 of them on this guitar. What are they called? They're hammered into the, I'm pointing at them right here. Okay, what are they called? Frets, okay, frets. What are the frets stuck into? I already told you, but can you remember? What's the piece of wood? It's not the neck, this is the neck. So there's the fret, this mysterious piece of wood, which you're going to be shouting at me right now. Shout it right below, what's it called? And then below we have the neck here. So this mysterious piece of wood here is often um, one of the most expensive parts of the guitar as regards the price of the wood, because that has to be quite well, not pure. Uh, so it's often like, you know, mahogany, rosewood. Uh, some description, some species of the rosewood family here. Or so on. Uh, Alright, so that's the fretboard. Now let's remember, think female body, okay? What's this called? What's this whole area called on the guitar? Every single guitar is called the same. What's it called? It is called... I forgot, it's called the body. What's above the body? Think of human anatomy. Body, neck. What's above the neck? Think of human anatomy. The head. Head stuck. Once again, I'm, I'm just uh, warning you guys, I do curse time to time, so uh, this is at your own risk. I'm, I'm doing my best to be uh, you know, family friendly, but we all make mistakes. Alright, and um, we got the tuners here. We've got six of them. They keep the guitar in tune. If you twist it one way, the string will go... It'll go down, like this. If you twist it uh, the other way, it'll go up like... Just depending on which way you twist it. Now it's going to be a lot more subtle than that sound effect I made. But uh, that's how you do it. Um, and I've already talked about, you know, buying a guitar tuner. Um, it's something that takes years. I, I thought there was, I thought I wasn't very good at music. Um, and people come up to me all the time and go, oh my god, I'd love to be as gifted as you being Stephen. And I I'm always get so frustrated because it's not some kind of talent or something. I didn't wake up being amazing at guitar. I practiced my bum off. So it doesn't matter if you have no arms, okay? There's people that play, uh, can play A chords and D chords and all the rest with just their toes. There's videos on the internet, uh, people, amputees and so on. Um, so you're just making excuses for yourself if you're saying, oh, my fingers hurt. There's people with no arms doing this. There's people, uh, what's that guy called? Oh, uh, gypsy guitarist. Django Reinhardt. Only has two fingers on his fretting hand, okay? One of the world's best jazz, jazzy, I'm not really sure the quite definition of the genre. But let's say jazzy. Uh, jazz, you can't jazz. Use these really nice scales like, um, kind of tasty scales like that. Whew. So we'll be teaching you all the scales at some stage. Don't you worry. And even if you know all this stuff already, I generally find if you just listen to someone who's uh, very experienced at what they do, they'll just accidentally slip in this gold dust of information. And even if you only get three seconds of gold, could save you years worth of, years worth of messing. Oh, jeez. Listen, ladies and gentlemen, be kind to yourself. Hope you have a nice cup of tea there. I hope you have uh, maybe a candle burning. You have to heat on a little bit. If you can't afford a heater, maybe a candle. If you're used to living uh, back in my college days, you used to use a candle for heat. Anyway, here we go. Poor old me. So, one, 
and two and three. I'm just doing dance drums. Do it with me, please. One. We're just gonna do an A chord and two and three and four and one and two and three and. Four. I know this might say, seem very mundane or whatever, but you can, can you hear how professional I sound and I'm only playing one chord? Like you can. I don't know, <laughs> it's amazing. I thought I was good at A chords. And uh, when I first started guitar, I was like, oh my God, I have this A chord down. Like this A chord is flawless. And I'm still improving on just this one A chord. It's absolutely bonkers. Because the, the better you get, the more you become an absolute master of what you do, the more you can see all the subtle uh, mistakes. And not always only mistakes, it's more of a, it's more of a taste thing. Like, uh, if you want a harsh sound, maybe you'll use a plec. If you want to be kind of more, have more of a human connection with the guitar, maybe you'll try using your fingers. Um, I've only started playing with my fingers full time in the last six months. I think it was just because I was trying very hard to get out of this consumerism and so on. And I just want to get back to nature because I thought a lot of, you know, laptops and stuff were kind of messing with my zen. So here we go. We're just doing down strums, people. Even if I'm, um, even if I'm talking and you're like, yeah, I know that vegan Steven. Just play, practice fingering those chords, okay? The A chord to the D chord. Practice those changes, A into E. We're gonna go quickly over this again. I know you know a million times, but practice makes practice. <laughs> All right, index finger on the. Do any of you guys get performance anxiety? I might talk, do an episode on that. It's where I sometimes I used to get this thing. It was so strange. It was at a strange time in my life, and I, I thought I wasn't good enough to play guitar. Like I was, those people were saying to me, you know, Vivian and Steve, and you're one of like Ireland's best or whatever. And I was like, oh. that was their personal opinion, not Spain. I am, but uh, they really like they really basically people thought I was a good guitarist, and I thought it was really bad just because of how I felt about myself. And it was nothing to do with my guitar playing. It was to do with some other. What are mad stuff? Yeah, like mad stuff going on in our lives. It's late on the mortgage payment, or <sighs> the woman wants kids, or whatever you're into. All right, here we go. A to D. Can you see how I'm barely moving my hand? Can you see my thumb is even staying? In th Let's look at the back of my hand here, okay? So here's A. Sorry, here we go. Here's A. Now look at my hand, I'm changing to D. There's almost no difference there. Think about how much energy I'm conserving. And then we're going to E. Pretty much no effort there, okay? Here's the entire effort, here's A. You can barely see my fingers moving. Let's get this angle gorgeous for you. A, sliding into D, ring finger up to the third fret. Slide that ring finger back to A. Now put that index finger on the first fret and pull your back two fingers up to E. All right, let's go back to A. Uh, back two fingers down on the G and B string, index finger on that D string, second fret. Everything is on, on the second fret, okay? It's going to take a lot of practice. If you want, I remember for maybe a year of playing guitar, I wasn't able to get that B string ringing out for my A chord, and it used to drive me ballistic. And what happened was, I've talked about this for the importance on um, going in and out. Uh, jeepers, it's so hard to not make... To just, I just want to make rude jokes constantly, and it's, it is not an appropriate situation. So listen, I am learning. I am learning. Okay. So I'm looking for a pencil, but I can't find it. Okay. So think of it as a pencil. Your finger goes in and out of the guitar. Okay. If your finger uh, is at a slight angle, it's going to be choking or reducing the resonance of the string. When you hit a string, it goes around in a circle, wah, 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 wah. and the slower it goes, the, the slower the note, and the faster, so here's a slow note, wah, wah. goes around 80 times uh, per second or something, it spins around in a circle 80 times per second, this, okay, that's 80 hertz. Now, if we go up to uh, this string, I could be wrong on, roughly speaking, roughly speaking, uh, I could be a little bit wrong with some of these digits, but anyway. Uh, so this is, I think 80 hertz is actually an octave below that. Yeah, 80 hertz is a low note on the bass guitar. So... <laughs> okay, well, 
I'm going to keep moving and this is uh, A which is 440 hertz which means that this string is vibrating 440 times per second going woo 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 alright 440 and I think this might be a multiple of 80 like um, I'm going to say 140 so 220, uh, frequency is kind of confusing, but as far as I know, this is, uh, that's 440, and then this is, one octave below this note, uh, is 80 hertz, anyway, so listen, we don't get the calculators out just yet, we're just learning strumming, alright, so A, D, A, E, countless songs, countless hits, and you can even go on some websites, where you can transpose, that means change the key of the song so it is in these three chords, okay? One, just down strums, every number down strum, every up is an <laughs> obviously, oh well, yeah, an up strum, every and's an up strum. So we're gonna turn on, once we get practice in this, we're gonna turn on, and you're probably thinking, oh, how do I hit the guitar? Use anthem, man, you can use your foot, you can use your tongue, uh, you can just clap your hands if you want. If you don't have a guitar yet, that's no problem. Uh, sometimes people, big guitarists, don't have time to uh, to study before a gig because they got so many gigs and they got time to money. So often they have to rehearse the classical piece um, on the plane journey to the gig. So can you imagine this? Okay, um, you have to learn a massive. <laughs> so yeah, someone rings you up, right, and goes, "Listen, can you play a world class piano piece?" Uh, in front of this big audience, right? And you go, yes, no problem, I will do that. Alright? And then the other guy goes, listen, um, the gig's tomorrow, so you're going to have to learn the police on the flight to the gig, on the actual airplane, with those people on the thing. So you, you won't actually have a piano on the plane, you'll just have to, like, pretend you do, with your mind. <laughs> And then show up at the gig and play it in front of all these people, having never actually played on a physical piano. Alright? And then the other guy goes, Yeah, no bother, I do that all the time. Can you imagine how fucking weird that is? Oh man, like, I, I do kind of a bit, sometimes I, I dip the toe in that kind of stuff, but, uh, man, you really have to be a fucking master in your craft to be doing that kind of thing. Uh, those are the big heavyweights. Alright, let's try out the music. So every so often, we'll do it like, uh, if you can, tap your foot along with the numbers. Now sometimes I'm going to say reggae or offbeat, and that means strum up. So one and two and three and four and one and two and Try this at home. And four and one. So you tap your foot on the beat and you strum up on the and. One and two and three. Uh, that might be getting a little bit ahead. You're welcome to try that if you want. Okay, so right now we're going to practice this blues crack, okay? We've been going over this for a long time. You can see it on the chart there. We've got a bar of A, a bar of D, two bars of A, two bars of D, two bars of A, one bar of E, one bar of D, one bar of A, and one bar of E, which I know must sound like a lot, but it's just that 12 bar blues played on loop 32 times, all right? And you write a song like, um, uh, oh, I'm drinking whiskey, um, Cause I got no money and I lost my job Oh baby I'm drinking whiskey cause I'm thirsty I'm thirsty for divinity Just make up your own stuff, just start singing about like uh, There'd been nothing good on the TV, on Netflix the week Oh there's nothing good on Netflix, chat Oh there's no seasons on for me Alright So we're gonna try this, we're just gonna do down strums and we're just practicing, all right? All this practicing, um, practicing with a metronome or a drum machine, preferably a metronome, but it takes a while, so let's try a drum machine. Okay, here we go. We're just gonna, one and two, all down strums, three and four. We're just gonna keep practicing. So I'm gonna count with you. One. <laughs> That's the wrong beat. One and two and three and four and one and two and, oops. All right, we'll be back. Keep counting or clapping and four and one and two and three and four. Clap or tap, baby. 
If you can, here's the real thing. Here's how you know when you're really good. When you can have a conversation with someone or do this while watching TV. Then you know your inner clock is working. One and two and three and... Then... Oh no, that's when you're on a different level of... A lot of people think they can do this, but they really can't. <laughs> Uh, it, it took me honestly years to be able to do that kind of crack and I still kind of mess it up. One and two and three and four and... Okay, we're going to start going. Get ready, eight chord ready. Four and one and... Here we go. Three and three. Next one or... Ow. One and two and three and four and... One. We're doing single strums start. We're going to do single strums to warm up. And the next time I come around, I'm going to do all down strums, okay? So don't worry if you're not getting that beat three and four. We just concentrate mostly on beat one. Uh, here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and D. One and two and three and A for two. One and two and three and A again. One and two and three and four. On the on the page there, A for two. If you're getting lost, it's on the page. Four and one. Basic blues form. You can Google it. And uh, D for two. One and this is the basics for uh, all like you know Led Zeppelin, early kind of South music. Okay. So cool. so this time we're gonna we're gonna try. This is this is called multitasking, okay? Have you ever seen people do this where they bang their head and, and rub the old hand on the tubby and then, you know, walk on one leg and do a circle? Multitasking, all right? Um, apparently women are very good at it. Apparently lads aren't so good at it. Who knows? I'm just asking questions. Now we're going to just do down strums and every single beat. Now this is complicated, okay? Because everyone has a fear of making mistakes. Not so much kids, but as you get older, because you're afraid of someone giving out to you. All this shit. Avoidance. Avoidance of pain masses up a lot of people. You can't be avoiding pain. You gotta go true, unfortunately. Alright, so we're going like this. One and two and three and four and anyway, like one and two. Alright, so we're just doing on the beats. Keeping it simple. Alright, here we go. One and two and three and four. Every beat. So once I said, alright, you're multitasking here because you're trying to think what chord is coming next while you're strumming. So listen, 
for beats three and four, you're probably going to have no fretting hand on the guitar, and your right hand's going to have to keep going. So one and two and three and four. Okay, so you got to keep this hand going. You can't speed up or slow down or go. Oh, what's next? The number one thing is you keep this hand going, and you'll do your best to have this finger on the right chord for every beat one. Okay, so try. Doesn't matter about three and four if you're up here for beat three and four. If you're picking your nose for three and four. Um, just get beat one and keep your right hand going. Okay, here we go, let's try it. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and... Okay. We're gonna start the blues together. Get your A chord ready. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. A for two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three. B for two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. A for two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and E for one, one and two and three. For two and two and three and four and D again two and three A for two here we go one and two and three and four and we're just here to make mistakes don't worry on to turn around one E two and D A E okay one and two and three and four D one and two Going. Three and A for two. One and feel the burn. <laughs> One and you can do it. Lift four. D for two. One and two and three and four and one and two and D A for two. Here we go. And one and two and three and four. Feel the burn. <laughs> two and big turn around. Here we go. E. One and D. One and. Two. Good, it's time for a little break time. All right, what's the littlest string? You try and answer this before I tell you, okay? What's the string close to the ground? The smallest one. Little E. What's the next one up as you're going up towards the ceiling? What's the next smallest string, which is slightly bigger? B. What's the next, uh, what's the next string going up towards the ceiling? G. What string's this? Uh, I said it's a very good idea just to even go like that practice string jumping I'm just using the side of my thumb here this cost me feckin nothing you can get a guitar like this in your granddad's uh, in a charity shop in a cheap you know one of those feckin malls where everything costs two euro you get a shitty guitar just to get practicing uh, beg borrow steal steal off an old woman punch Mother Teresa God bless her soul. Uh, influential woman. Um, oh my love, oh my love, we're halfway through the lesson, my love. All right, bottom string, what's that called? The smallest one, little E. B string, where's that? The second one from the bottom. Next string up towards the ceiling, what's it called? G. Um, what's the next string called? We're getting a bit thicker now as we're going up. Um... As the strings get bigger, the lower they cycle per second, and the lower the pitches. Next one up, we're a second from the top here. This string is called A. Next, we're going up. I'm just like speaking French here. We're just practicing, talking music to each other. This is big E. All right, so there's two E's. There's big E, there's little E. Uh, 
uh, ratio. What's this big circle called in the middle of the guitar? Sound hole. What's this thing here at the back? Let's go. Bridge. What? What? What's this feckin' lanky thing hanging out of my shoulder? Keeping this guitar strapped to my body at all times. Bring it down to the supermarket, no bother. Uh, guitar strap. <laughs> What's this lovely, gorgeous white thing here at the very front of my guitar? Just before the headstock. That is called a nut. N-U-T. What is the support system going behind uh, metal steel string guitars? That can be adjusted by Allen key, either by the top of the headstock or just below. What's that called? My love. Come on, beautiful, you can do this. Come on! That's right, it's whatever you said. Uh, so we got the nut, we got the string tree. We don't have string trees on this one. We have the machine heads, which keep it in tune. We've talked about that loads. We've got the neck. What's this thing in between the neck and the frets? Fretboard. Mm. What's the double dot on the guitar mean? What's the double dot? That it means it's halfway between the two nodal points, the bridge and the E. So when you hit a string, it's going around a circle, and the place where it's making the biggest cycle is right here at the 12th fret. That's if you... Uh, yeah, <laughs> so that's why there has to be distance between uh, the fretboard and the string. That is called that distance between the fretboard and the string. Okay, and with bass guitar, you can hold the string up by the uh, guitar up by the strings. It's not so much recommended with these guitars, but it's okay. I'm a, I'm a professional, <laughs> I'm a professional stuntman, uh, lads. I'm having some serious wardrobe mal malfunctions with my underpants here. They keep showing, and they're not black, so it's an absolute wardrobe malfunction. Alright, we got the strings here. These strings are phosphorus bronze. It doesn't matter what strings you have. It doesn't matter what guitar you have. All that matters is you keep it on your brain as a positive way. Think of yourself as a, a vessel for for music and just mm, yeah, I'm letting the music out. I'm letting it out with my emotions. One and two and let's keep going with this, alright? We're gonna go around again. We're we're only gonna strum on the on the beats. We're gonna go a bit slower, hopefully, unless I get excited and speed up. One, gonna do A on the next one. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. on to D. Just only do up strums if you get bored. And four. On to D for two. One, two, and three. I'm talking so much I can't remember where I am. On to A. We're gonna have to start again. I was too busy talking about my wardrobe malfunction to concentrate on where I was. Now we're gonna go back to drum beat. That keeps on track. Alright, remix. One and it's a bit fast. One and two and three and four. Here we go. One and two and three and four. D. One and two and three. A. One for two. Three and three and four. Out one and two. On to the next line of chords. D for two. One and two and three and four. Out. Another round of D. Here we go, we're going on to A. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two. I encourage you to sing along. Turn around. One and D. One, shoot. One. Oh, lads. Vegan Stevens getting... Something. All right, so listen, now we're going to practice uh, doing upbeats, okay? So we're going to stamp our foot on the one, so one, and then we're going to clap on the and. So it's going to sound like this. One and two and three and four and. I said this may seem simple, but try doing it for an hour straight while uh, talking to someone about gardening or something. It's very hard to do to multitask. 
okay? I'd recommend doing some kind of music, even if it's just uh, We'll Rock You by, you know, Queen or something. All right, we're gonna keep going. One and two and one. Okay, here we go. Gotta try and do it a little bit quicker. One and two and. So every time I say and, you're gonna clap. One and two and. The foot is, you know, doing the numbers. Two and three. Here we go. Four and one and two and three and four and one and two. Don't worry, it's complicated. Just keep going. One and two and three and four and one and two. Uh, I said it may seem easy, but I can try and do this for an hour straight. Your mind just starts to speed up and slow down. You can even tell I'm not 100% on the beat. I'm kind of drift, speed up and slowing down the hair because uh, I'm trying to, you know, talk and think what I'm going to say in the next few minutes. And, one and two and three and four and the one and two and three e and a four e and a, I'm gonna mess around. And three and four and one and two. Oh, at the ends. Four and one and two. Just play the ends. And four and one and two. Okay, we're gonna try reggae blues. Okay, now what does reggae blues mean? Uh, it's just like a little mind twister, just to... We're basically going to do that exercise instead of any time we, you know, the way we clap there. Instead of clapping this time, we're going to strum up on the guitar, alright? So we're just going to just do this with an A chord. A chords, D chords and um, E chords are the foundation of guitar playing. Depending on who you talk to. <laughs> It's a good bet. You can use any three chords you want, one, four, and five, depending on any key, but these ones are kind of... Sometimes they start off with the key of C, sometimes they start off with the key of G. Key of D, E, not so much E, because some hard chords to do with E with uh, E. All right, so listen, we're just going to do up strums, okay? Here we go. One, bit slower, and one, and two, and three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and this is how reggae works. One, and two, and three, and four, and one, all up strums. This is what separates the kids from the greats. And this the dedication, the thing that makes people sound professional is timekeeping and pitch generally. Now you don't have to worry so much about pitch with guitar, but you do have to worry about other things. <laughs> uh, timing will really make or break you, I think, because timing can be under different headings, you know, groove, feel, um, yeah. So there's the time domain and there's the pitch domain. And when they kind of intertwine, you get, you get music. Um, what is music? Music is organized sound. If you have disorganized sound, it is called noise. And I love noise. It sounds like this. It's more or less all frequencies at the same uh, perceived level. Um, that's called white noise, pink noise is when it's filtered, brown noise uh, apparently makes you fart, it's a fictional kind of noise. It's, yeah, it's just filtered, it has a different kind of, uh, it peaks at different frequencies and so on. It's just general, you know, uh, physics behind how sound waves work. Everything has a, uh, uh, you know, like a fundamental frequency. If, sometimes if you're playing, uh, if this, right, if you're playing this, just go on up every note. You'll notice that different things in the room start vibrating at different frequencies. So maybe, for example, if I hit like a G, my cooker in the kitchen starts rattling. But if I hit one note below it, it won't rattle. And one note above it, it won't rattle. It's to do with resonant frequencies. How much per second uh, an item will vibrate per second. Now, you can do this with something like a glass of water in a wine glass. That's a good thing for resonating. And, and all the things. Alright, so let's keep going. We're going to try 
We're gonna try this blues with some up strums and we're gonna try it slowly. So just up strums again, here's what it is. One and instead of clapping, we're strumming up towards the ceiling. If we're on the beat, we're strumming down towards the ground, up, we are going up. Uh, the red, the up beats are in red there. I know I keep repeating myself, but you gotta learn all this unfortunately, so I gotta keep drilling into it. Um because uh, I find like a lot of YouTube videos, you know, they're like three minutes long. You're kind of like, what? What's that? Like, they only kind of touch on. They don't show you every little nitty gritty boring shit. Anyway, listen. Um, let's keep going. So we're doing up strums on the blues. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four on to D one and this is called syncopation and three and four and back to A for two one and two and three and four D1. <laughs> I'm going to start again. I'm going to try and talk less. Here we go. Let's start next one after this one. We're starting. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. A. Hey. One and two and three and again. Chords don't match up, just keep clapping along. One and two and three. Here we go. Uh, one more time. We might need an old drum beat for this one because it's getting late. Oh, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and D one and two and three and A for two. One and two and three and Another A, one and two and three and D for two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four A for two, one and two and three and four and one and two and three and E for turn around one and two and three and D one and two and three and four A one and Two and three and E. One and two. We're gonna keep going. We're on fire. Four A. One and back to start. And three and four E D. And two and three and A for two. One and two and three and four. And clap along. Two and three and four. D for two. And two and three and four and one and two and three. Four and one and two and three and four and D and two and three and four and one and two and three and four E one and two and three and again one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four D one and two and three and A for two we're on bar three and bar four one and two and three and four bar to bar five one and two and three six one and two and three and seven A one and two and three A again and one and two and going to bar eight E and two and three and uh, D one and two and three and four and one and two 
Last one, E. One and two and three and four. Brilliant. Oh, don't worry about not getting the, the changes in yet because we're still, we're building up each hand. The race is going on and right now your left hand's winning the race, okay? So your right hand's going to catch up by doing some, some rhythmic. So you got your pitch in your fretting hand and your tempo in your strumming hand. Alright, time's running out, so we only got 15 minutes left. So we talked about all the parts of the body yet again, we went over all those string names. Familiarizing with yourself, yourself with time and the time domain, counting is so important. Even if you don't count, listening to what everybody else is doing in the room. You have to be able to listen to the drum beat and then add your guitar or instrument to that drum beat. You can't just be like throwing out whatever and not listen to the drum beat, it'd be a fucking mess. Um, in most cases. There's, there's occasions where it's very, very tasteful, like when you're trying to recreate a storm or whatever, but yeah. At this early stage in the game, sure we'll stick to the basics. All right, we're gonna go once again, keep it simple, because we're all getting tired. Down strums, all right, here we go. And two, and three, here we go. Four, and one, and two, and okay. <laughs> one, and two, starting again. And three, and four, and one, and two, and three, and four, and D, and two, and three, and four, and one. And Try to recognize the shapes of the chords. And D and D and the way you can just play along with some random lad in a pub. <laughs> a for two. Or and three. E turn around. One and two and three and four and D and two and three and four and A and two and three and four and one. So, I'm not quite changing chords in, in the right place, so, but it's no biggie. We're just learning. We're just learning. Um, we're just mostly working on the rhythm, so we're not too worried about these chords, because your fingers are going to be quite sore. Uh, it's completely normal at this stage of the game. Um, I'd recommend... I'm a bit of a workaholic, so if uh, if you can't strum, sorry, if you can't pick, uh, I, I generally just keep playing just because I like to get my hours up. Again, just pam, pam, we don't know what pam muting is because I haven't told you. <laughs> just picking the strings and just like getting used to all the strings, you don't have to look at it. Do you know what I mean? What I used to love doing was play little games with myself. I used to be like, right, I'm going to look for the D string and just play it and I kind of put my hand on the guitar and kind of feel my way around like right that's the D string give that a bang and I look for the B string and I'm like where, where's that one and then check it because um, if you're doing stuff like looking back at the sound hall it's not good it's not good you only have six strings back here okay E A D G B E okay so you've only got six possible different positions you can have your finger in this, alright? It's like changing gears on a car. You've only got six possible positions, so you don't need to be looking at the fucking gear stick on the fucking car. Sorry for cursing. <laughs> Likewise, you don't need to be looking at the at this fuck at this thing. Uh, <laughs> uh, all right. So either don't look at the guitar at all. I oh, know that's getting a bit advanced, isn't it? It's hard to look at this stage. It's 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 gonna take a long time. It's gonna take a lot of practice. And um, I'm trying to remember what it was like for me practicing, uh, so I can give you the best, the best tippy whippies. Um, but yeah, just just keep keep practicing. Tap along to music. Um, sing along. It'll all internalize the music inside you. Just keep tapping, singing. 
play with uh, your siblings, even if it's just banging on pots, play with uh, parties, just get start banging on something. You gotta, you gotta put in all these hours and every little thing, every little conversation you have about music adds to your perspective, and your perspective is always going to be changing. Like some days you'll, I, I, I didn't like guitars for a while. I just started playing piano and so on. And different, different parts of your life, you'll different, you'll like different things. Maybe you like country right now, and you like dance music in ten years. Who knows? Maybe you like lettuce this year. Maybe you. Or oh, yeah, like carrots the next year. I think you get the idea, my love. So, um, we're learning the solid foundations here for the rest of your music career. Um, this is open source, and this is free, and this is all the things. All the things you could want. So comment below what you'd like to do. Even as I'm talking, just keep practicing those chords. Okay? But you can view this as just your practice time. This is what I would do if I was you guys. I'd just lash me on as some kind of like background noise. And just every so often you're like, oh yeah, do that A chord, yeah, no bother. Because uh, <laughs> uh, a lot of times people are like, oh, practice, that seems like a lot of work. Oh, no. It feels like punishment or something. But uh, if you just make it flipping fun, just hanging out with your mates, banging on some pots, banging on a keyboard even if you don't know how to play it, playing a little drum beat and just going... Oh, I don't want to go to school today, I just want to stay home and eat crisps, oh yeah. <laughs> Whatever comes to your mind, just, just fucking go for it. So, uh, creativity is like a muscle. Um, it's... You won't, unless you practice being creative, you won't get creative. Um, some people think I'm funny. I wasn't, I was very unfunny for the first 20 years of my life. Uh, everyone was like, that is not funny. Uh, <laughs> it's quite scary because it's like playing, learning how to, learning life through an electric guitar amp in public and every mistake you make, everyone's like, oh, that's disgusting. <laughs> so it's, uh... With Anthony, you know, you gotta make a lot of mistakes, and some of those mistakes are in public. Um, it can really help with uh, things like your your mental health and so on. Just chilling out, playing, focusing on something that isn't your thoughts and so on. Um, I rarely get stressed when I'm playing uh, guitar. It's like one of my one of my best friends in a way. We're running out of time, ladies and gentlemen. I'm gonna go over how to change these chords. So when you listen to music, stamp that foot. You often hear in drum beats like, you know, so every time you hear that low drum, you stamp your foot, and then I just count along. Every time that beat goes, you just tap your foot along, and in between every foot stamp, you're just slapping your slapping the side of your pants like this. One and two and three and one and two. Like a whipping motion. Well, that's a bit hard, isn't it? Uh, you can even just go. Even that helps, man. Two and three and four and one and two e and a three e and a four e and a one and two e and a three. Yeah, all that crack. All right, just tapping on something. Keep keep everything flowing. Um, man, I just want to watch Avatar now. <laughs> Anyone else watching Young Offenders? Season two is out now. Just giving that another watch. It's a bit of crack. Stealing bikes, having babies. Some kind of Irish TV show. For Young Offenders. Right, here's our two and A chord. So we're here, we got index finger on the D string, second fret, middle finger, G string, second fret, ring finger, B string, second fret. Now we're on A, and we're gonna change to D. So we're gonna slide that ring finger to the third fret, and we're dropping down our index and middle all the way down to, our middle finger's going all the way down to the bottom like this, whoop. Index finger's gone down, whoop. The ring finger's gone across, whoop. So all together, we're in A. Slide that ring finger across, drop down these two fingers. We're only playing the bottom four strings there, okay? I can feel cheeky, one on the top. But uh, that's, you might pull a muscle there. You might put a rock, pull a rock and roll, roll muscle there doing that one. You wanna do some rock and roll stretches before you, before you start doing that one. All right, we've got the D chord. 
now we're going on to the we're going back to A so we're pulling up our index and middle finger then we're sliding our ring finger back five strings for this one no big string on top for this one all right we're just finger picking here um back to D slide that ring finger across drop those those two fingers down now we're going to move to the E chord we're going to slide our index finger to the first fret and pull up our ring and middle finger okay let's go back let's do that in reverse so we are going to a now we're dropping down our ring finger middle finger we're sliding our index finger back into position okay we come back to the a now we're going to e again index finger on the first fret pull up that middle finger and that ring finger And if you already if you already have this down, this is just kind of background noise you're practicing. So just one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and all right. There's your three chords, my love. The guitar has already gone out of tune. Right, just for the crack, I'll show you how to tune the guitar with harmonics. This is pretty advanced, but just it's a bit bit interesting. So, <laughs> fifth fret of the of the E string and the seventh fret on the E string, due to the harmonic series and so on. If you pluck it a certain way, um, you can tell if this if they're both resonating at the same cycles per second, because it will kind of sound dissonant like a horror film, like this, if they're not in tune. It might sound like this. Oh, hang. Right. <laughs> it's okay. I'm a professional. My sound is kind of dissonant, a bit like that. Um, a bit like tritones. This guitar is not in tune, so you can hear how they sound pretty nice together. It's all about the fifth and seventh fret. Fifth fret and the above string. Seventh fret and the below string. Apart from that cheeky flipper, which I think is tuned to like a flat fourth or fourth, I can't remember, between the G string and B string. So for this one, you will have to use the fourth fret of the G and the fifth fret of the B string. Now we're going down one more string. This is quite advanced already, I know, but we're just talking about harmonics for the crack. Fifth fret on the B string and fifth, seventh fret on the E string should sound the same, and so on. So that's how you tune using harmonics. You can also use these open strings, putting your finger on the fifth fret of the E string and making sure it sounds like the open string of the string below. It works in all of them. Fifth fret of the A string should sound like the open D string. Fifth fret on the D string should sound like the open G. And as always, the B is being very cheeky. Fourth fret on the G and open B string. And finally, fifth fret on the B string and open little E string and you can do the inverse of that which is going up which is seventh fret oh uh, Jesus <laughs> seventh fret and Lee uh, uh, eighth fret on the B seventh fret on the seventh fret the whole way up alright uh, unless it's eighth fret on the B sure we'll, we'll keep touching on every little while alright we'll keep touching on it every Upstrums, one and two and two and two and one and two and two. Bob Marley, one and two and three and four. Reggae, and syncopation. It really gets the groove going when you. Dog's favorite music is reggae, by the way. So if you want to be nice to your dog, play some reggae. One and two and three and four. I don't know how to play reggae with the blues for and one and two and three and four I'm playing my guitar up 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 I'm playing reggae for and one and two and three and four practice that reggae all right we'll have to really wrap up now because we only got like 55 seconds left so the double fret, the double dot it represents the 12th fret, which is halfway between the note and the other thing. The, <laughs> you only have an have a inlay that on the 5th fret, 7th fret, 9th fret and 12th fret. And then the multiples of that, like, they keep going up. So this note, is one actually below this note on the 3rd fret. And it's, it's all 
Let's do the harmonic series and all sorts of mad shit. Mad. Yeah, all that stuff. So, listen, comment below. Um, this is interactive, okay? So if you guys want to hear a little bit more about something else, um, we can look into that. I don't really have much interest in learning covers with you guys because... No, we'll, we'll talk about it. We'll talk about it and see what happens. This is open. Uh, I want this to be the best it possibly is, so it's going to be interactive. We're going to have guest lectures. But people who are even better at guitar than me, because I believe in working with the best. So I'm not one of those lads who's like, I want to be the best. All right, who knows? All right, so listen, that was very uh, well done, and you can do it. Just keep the head down. This is a marathon, not a an all racy race. So it's gonna take time. This has been lesson five of lesson four was guitar tuning. This is lesson five, and that is it. Congratulations on your fifth hour of super success. <laughs>